This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to all. You are now watching. And if you're not, please get your families to join and watch with us today as we hear from God. Farm Street Community Church welcomes all to this service. And we pray that you will be blessed, that you will hear from the Lord. You will be uplifted. You will be delivered, released. We know that when the Holy Spirit takes control, that we feel and receive response from him. So before I hand over to Sister Jenny, there's just another scripture that I would like to read. And it's a well-known scripture from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, know that the Lord he is God, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Enter into his, sorry, we are the sheep of his pasture, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, be thankful to him and bless his name. Now you'll see that I rushed that a little bit because I couldn't get, couldn't wait to get to the part that says enter into his gates. And we can enter his gates online. We can really make a difference if we just have a heart full of thanksgiving and of praise. Be thankful unto him today. Bless his name today and get your family, your community, anybody that you've not yet had an opportunity to send the link, please send them the link and ask them to join in with us because we are truly going to experience God. At this time, I'd like to hand over to Sister Jennifer Barnett and she is going to do a prayer of thanksgiving. God bless you, Sister Jennifer. God bless you, Sister Noblet. I'd like to take this opportunity to greet our senior pastor, our ministers, brethren, friends, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, it is a beautiful day. The sun is shining and I pray that the light of the Lord is shining within us on the inside. Brethren, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for. Regardless of what we may be going through in the good times and the bad, our God is always with us. And as we are reminded in scripture, he's on our side and he will never leave us nor forsake us. So join with me this morning and let us pray together and give thanks unto our mighty God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our Father, who art in heaven, whose name is so hallowed. Father, we give you thanks this morning that we are able to come together on this platform, Lord, and give thanks and praise unto you. Father God, you are a good, good Father. And we have so many things, my God, to be thankful for. Father God, you have brought us thus far. And as your word reminds us, you will never leave us, Lord, nor forsake us. Regardless, Father God, of what we go through, you change us not. We can reach out and hold on to you and cling to you, Father God, because you are there. You are our solid rock. You are our help in time of trouble. We can cry out and you hear and you answer us. Father God, we thank you for your mercifulness, your graciousness. Father God, we adore you because, Father, you are so faithful. What you say you do, you do, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, for who you are. Father God, we thank you that we are able to come on this platform and we can still praise and worship you, regardless of not being in our church building. But we are here, Lord, by your grace and mercy. We can look out the window, Lord, and see the sun shining. Father God, help us to have a heart of gratitude, to be thankful, Father God, when we are on the mountaintop, hallelujah, when we are in the valley, Father God, you are with us. You are a good, good Father, and we are loved by you. That's who we are. So we bless you and lift your name on high. 
And Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will lead us throughout this service today, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you will touch every heart, soul, mind and spirit. Father God, we pray for each and every segment within your service. But ultimately, this service is yours. It belongs to you. So, Father God, we, again, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father God, for being here for us as we bless you. Hallelujah. As we honor you, as we give you all the praise because you are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. And together, Father God, in one mind of one accord, we say thank you, Lord. Let your holy and divine will be done as we look to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you, Sister Jennifer. Thank you. Thank God. Now, for those of you who know me, you know I'm all about interaction. And I like when everybody's involved. If we were in the church, I would be expecting some hallelujahs, some praise the Lord. I can't hear anybody. So I have to feel through you the presence of the Holy Spirit is moving amongst all of us as if we were literally in the building, as Sister Jenny said in her prayer. Now, our theme today is informed, prepared, and positioned and I believe that's a theme that we probably should carry through for the rest of the year because we are in end times and we have to be informed of what's taking place be prepared and we must be in a particular position to experience the greatness and the goodness of God so as we hand over to Sister Sonia for worship I'm going to ask you in the chat wherever you are as loud as you can let's give God some praise some thanksgiving as we worship in song Sister Sonia Gibbons God bless you Amen. Leaning on the everlasting arms. And the truth is, for what we're currently experiencing, we have to lean on the everlasting arms of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Do you know that song? One of the things that really strikes me about it is where it says, what have I to fear and what have I to dread? Once we are secured in the Lord, yes, we'll have little butterflies and we'll have little fears here and there. But the truth is, what do we have to fear when we lean on Jesus, on the everlasting arms of God. And so said, with that said, I'm going to now ask um, Brother Reuben Johnson if he's ready. This is our youth focus ses session. And I'm gonna ask that you please pray for him. Remember to pray for all our young people because trust me, they need our prayers as we need theirs. So at this time, please Brother Reuben, if you could just come online. God bless you. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Church. Today I'm the youth I'm going to encourage you all and talk about a song that I felt has been on my heart for the past month and a bit um so it started when I was creating a group chat for the youth leaders on whatsapp and I was thinking what should I say what should I ask everyone to say to as sort of an icebreaker and I went through different things in my head and I thought at first I could ask them what are their hobbies you know what do they like to do? Do they like to exercise? I don't know. And I passed through different subjects and then I ended up on um, favourite songs and scriptures that have been with them for the past couple of months or a bit more. And I sent mine in and mine was Something Has to Break. And I listened to everyone else's and it was like having your own personal devotion, your own worship session with yourself. And I thought that was really good. But my song was Something Has to Break by Kiera Sheard and Karen Clark, and the lyrics just simply go, I feel it in this room, Holy Spirit move, because when you have your way, something has to break. And further on down it goes, I believe you'll get to me to it. I believe you'll lead me through it. I believe that you will do it right now. Something has to break. So this song just and just allowing him to have the way. I've been speaking to Jesus Christ to the head of our life through whatever we do. Um, so I hope it encourages you. If you miss the song, something has to break. 
by Kia Rashid. I hope everyone else who's heard it before has been encouraged by it. I felt really blessed when I listened to it and I continue to listen to it most days. It's a really nice song and it just continues to allow you to build on your faith and it really goes up. And both of them are all great artists when it comes to things like that and I encourage the word that they pass along. So I hope you all enjoy that song and just feel blessed by it and continue to keep your faith in God and worship him every day of your life. God bless you all. God bless you, Brother Ruben. Such a sound word for this time. Something has to break. And, you know, this is not just for the youth. It's for all of us. We, there's a time in our lives where we just constantly doing the same thing over and over and over again. But then something must break within us so that we can see and identify who we are and therefore give our lives completely over to God. We're going to have another worship session at this time. And as I said before, if you can just worship with us, sing with us, pray with us, bless the Lord with us, we're gonna ask Sister Sonia Gibbons again, if she can just do a song in worship for us. God bless you, Sister Sonia. I vow to praise him in the good and the bad. What else can I say? Such a beautiful song with beautiful words. At this time, we are going to welcome our minister, our pastor, um, Sister P Pastor Paulette Basson, who will be bringing the word today. But before she comes along, if you could just bow your heads with me, I'm just going to pray for her. And then I will hand straight over to the beautiful Pastor Paulette. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the opportunity to praise you one more day. This truly is the day that you have made and we will rejoice. We were aware of the beautiful sunshine in many areas today and we know how uplifting it can be. But there's nothing greater than being uplifted by your word and by your Holy Spirit and your power. And therefore, right now, we place before you your servant, Pastor Paulette, who will be delivering the word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will speak through her. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will anoint her, that every word that she speaks will come directly from you. And as it comes directly from you, we will be changed. We will be uplifted. I pray for each and every person that is online, that they will hear and receive what you have to say. We know, my God, that many times the words is accepted and received in our hearts on many different levels when we pray that that will take place today heavenly father we place all things in your hands and we pray for a, sup a supreme blessing from you through your servant as we say thanks in no other name than the name of our lord jesus christ i now take great pleasure in handing over to pastor paulette please continue to pray for her as she delivers the word pastor paulette god bless you god bless you Minister Novlet, um, and I say that seriously. God bless you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to greet my, um, my family in Christ in the beautiful name of Jesus. Uh, it's an honour and a privilege uh, to be here this morning, to be alive, to be alive every single day is a boldness. It's a privilege. Everybody say, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. Let's not take life for granted. It's a privilege. And not just a privilege. We're alive. We're in our right minds. I can see you. You can see me. I can hear you. You can hear me. I just thank God for everything. And so today, um, I've been given the, the task. I don't know why. Pastor thinks I can follow what's been going on over the past few weeks. But... It's got to be God. Over the past few weeks, um, God has spoken to us, has he not? Um, as a church, profoundly. He has profoundly spoken to us. And I'm still feasting from Pastor Ricky um, and also from our, our senior pastor last week. And um, the theme, as you know, is about being informed, prepared, and position. There were common themes running through um, the, the, the two um, sermons that we heard. And for me, what struck me a lot was that it was about um, God was speaking to us as a people. 
We all know that we need our individual relationship with God, and that is key. We have to have a relationship with God. But in this time and during the past few weeks, I've noticed that God has been addressing us as a people, as a church. And it isn't just about, oh, it's Farm Street or it's Aberdeen Street. It's talking to a people. And the people that we're talking about, that we are, we have an identity. Who are we? Well, let me tell you who we are. We are a chosen generation, a holy, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Listen to what verse 10 says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Brethren, we were a chosen generation. We were chosen from the first minute that we were born. We were going to live through this pandemic. The people who lived through World War I and World War II and the Spanish flu and all of those traumatic times, they were chosen to live then. We were chosen to live through what we're going through now. From the time we were born, the Lord knew, because remember, He's from, from the foundation of the world, so he knew exactly. So he's been preparing us from we were born to go through what we're going now and to witness and experience uh, what we're going through now. We're a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We're set apart, whether we like it or not. We are a peculiar people. When I was growing up, I used to think, peculiar, does that mean peculiar, strange, or what does that mean? But the NLT puts it this way, that peculiar people means that we are God's very own possession. That's what the NLT said. That's, that's big. That means that I can't do as I like. You can't do as you like because we are God's very own possession God owns us I see with interest that Harry and Meghan have decided that they no longer want to be royals because the life's too hard it's too restrictive they reckon it's it's too much abiding by all those rules but belonging to God and being in the royal priesthood places us in a very prestigious spot. Ephesians 1 says that we are in heavenly places in Christ. So the word that we've been receiving over the past few weeks tells us who we are, that we're special, that we belong to God. We haven't been receiving no soft, fluffy word either. The word has been very directional and very clear about what God is expecting from us. His people, his possession. The reason why the word that we've been receiving recently has been so profound and very specific is because we're living in end times. That's why. If you notice the word has been different, it's because we're in end time. And if there's never a time that we need to be informed, prepared and positioned my brethren and my friends it's now during this time of chaos abnormality confusion it feels as though we have stepped inside the bible everything that we've ever read is being fulfilled right now i've had the privilege of visiting um, the Holy Land and standing in spots that I've been reading about for years was surreal but to find myself there and there was a very evident presence of the Lord there 
but can I just say to, say to you that that's what's happening to us now? The prophecies, the word that we've been reading and studying over years, we're living in it now. And they're being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. And can I just say something? It's happening very, very quickly. It's not happening in Krona's time. It's not happening in what we think, the time, the time that we think we have. No, it's happening overnight. And of the three areas, being informed, brethren, we cannot say that we're not informed. God has spoken to us his treasured possession over and over and over again. We've received teaching and preaching. We have been taught, we've been informed over and over and over. God, our Father, has made sure that we are informed. The scripture that Pastor used last week was uh, from Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And it gave a clear outline of what to do once you've been past the informed stage. When Jehoshaphat received the news or was informed that the vast armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites and the Mayanites, as Pastor outlined very, very deeply last week, that they were coming on him, they declared war on him. The King James Version in verse 3 says that Jehoshaphat feared, right? Now the NLT says that Jehoshaphat was terrified. This man was frightened. Now that was a very, very human response. And for me, that was really important because Sometimes when we read about um, people in the Bible, we think that there's some sort of superhuman that don't feel what we feel. But here we see Jehoshaphat was frightened. He feared. He was terrified. And it was a human response to a stressful and terrifying situation. I don't really know the equivalent of how we put that today to say that there are, you know, vast armies coming to declare war on us. But just put it this way, that we've got a taster of what it feels to be afraid and stressed right now. It's very reassuring, though, to see that men as great as Jehoshaphat felt frightened. But what he taught us in Second Chronicles chapter 20 was what to do with that fear and terror and how he positively influenced the people of Judah. I'm going to read, um, just bear with me while I just read, I want to read you two versions of what happened in verse 2, 3 and 4. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in, in Azazon Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now bear with me. And a vast army, messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Azan Tamar. This was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Now what I want to show you in those verses, you will notice in both versions from the time that Jehoshaphat received the news of what was going to happen and felt 
the unpleasant emotion of fear, there wasn't a pause or a delay for him to seek the Lord. If you listen to those verses, he was told, he feared, then he seek the Lord. His reaction was immediate. This is such an important lesson for us. I think Sister Noblet said something earlier. This is such an important, important lesson for us to learn. Sometimes while we're umming and ahhing and stressing about a situation that we've got no control over, we become more vulnerable to the enemy because rather than place our focus on God, we're there thinking, oh, what, am, uh, what, 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 what shall I do? And we're probably talking to Tom, Dick and Harry over there when really if we just focus, seek the Lord, I pray God that, you know, through this time, that will become a, a, a kind of instant reaction, a response to us. As a fact, he was told, he was scared, but then he said, God, what shall I do? And so sometimes while we're umming and ahhing, the enemy can play havoc with us. And when we delay in seeking the Lord, we get into more bother. We already know, because we say it as a reputation, as a, a recitation, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help. You don't have to go and look and go into a room and is our very present help in the time of trouble. Was Jehoshaphat in trouble? Yes. Have we been in trouble? Yes. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help. We know what David said. I will lift mine eyes to the ills from whence cometh my help. You can lift your eyes to the ills on the bus. You can lift your eyes to the ills wherever you are sitting at work. Lift your eyes. It's a, God isn't, we don't have to search for him. Just lift our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We also know that we need to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean up to our own understanding in all our ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct our path. You know, so sometimes we, we got to get that. Jehoshaphat got that. And if there's nothing more that he did, he got that. He knew that immediately he was going to turn to the almighty God. And that is what he did. The next thing that Jehoshaphat did in verse three was to proclaim a fast. He realized and understood that for the seriousness of the situation, he needed a serious weapon and he needed to do a serious action. The world that we're going back to now when we come out of lockdown is going to look very different to the world that we left last year the weapons that we were using probably last year are going to be different to the weapons that we're going to be using when we go back the bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god strategies are good plans are good all sorts of strategies are good, but the weapons of our warfare, brethren, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the pulling down of strongholds. And there'll be many strongholds that we thought we could, we, we'd seen before, that we've never seen before. There's many strongholds to contend with. And a soft little prayer, <laughs> is not going to do it for some of the strongholds. Am I saying that prayer doesn't work? No, I'm not saying that. Prayer is a strong weapon. When we pray in the name of Jesus, all sorts of bondages are lost or loosed. All things are possible when we pray. Prayer does change things. But in Matthew chapter 17, when the disciples were unable to dislodge a stubborn demon from a little boy, 
and they asked Jesus, why, what, what, why couldn't we get rid of this demon? Why couldn't we cast it, cast it out? Jesus said, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. We're going to be seeing a lot of this kind in terms of strongholds manifesting themselves when we come out of lockdown. And can I say that some of those strongholds are even amongst us? Yes, even amongst us. Already, we hear in the world and around us, it's alarming to hear about the spirit of suicide on the rise, rearing its ugly, nasty head, its lying head, its false head amongst us. Severe anxiety in children. What have children got to be anxious about? Severe anxiety, psychological disorders amongst us, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And some of the, this is happening right here among, amongst us. So Jehoshaphat said, right, desperate time call for def, desperate measures. And he proclaimed a fast. Here also I want to draw our attention to the fact in verse 3 that Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast. Now, Jehoshaphat feared, set himself to seek the Lord, proclaimed a fast. Look at verse 4. Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Again, I notice that from the time Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast to the time that the people gathered together, there wasn't no gap. The people didn't say, what are you calling a fast for? Sure, I haven't got time for that. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Jehoshaphat, what you do? They didn't question Jehoshaphat. They didn't have time for that. We let, let, let's have a meeting first, Jehoshaphat, to discuss whether our fasting is the right way. Anyway, we've got this, we've got people with certain conditions amongst us that might not be able to fast. And there's so many different things we can bring while we can't fast. But there was no delay. The people came together. We, we can learn a lesson from that Farm Street. We're living in a crucial time when we need to work in unison and stop questioning. As long as it is God that's directing us, we better just come together in unison, in harmony, in accordance to the will and direction of our God. It was in Judah's obedience that God was able to work and that God was able to get them out of their situation. That was the prepared, the preparation section. They feared, but then they prepared themselves in prayer, united prayer and fasting. Jehoshaphat was a godly leader and he prayed a magnificent prayer um, between verses 6 to 12 and right there they were able to prepare themselves. Now in terms of the positioning I just want to bring our attention to something. Now I just want to read uh, uh, verses 5, 13, 17 and 20. If you have your Bibles you can look but if not it doesn't matter. I just want you to watch out for a particular word. This is the positioning part. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Verse 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones their wives and their children, everybody stood. Verse 17, ye shall not need to fight in, this is, this is the Lord saying, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still. 
and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You notice a common theme there. Verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, what did Jehoshaphat do? He stood and said, Hear me, O J Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. There's a position there of standing. Our position, brethren and friends, needs to change. We've got to stand, especially now when we get back. We wasn't lying before or sitting, but sometimes, you know, perhaps we're a bit tired, you know, but now we need to stand. We're in the end of the end. We need to stand. We certainly can't afford to lie or to relax. We need to stand. We need to take, in other words, a fighting stance because you can't fight lying down and you can't fight sitting down. You've got to be standing. It's very, very difficult to wield a sword sitting down. They do on the telly when they're having those fights, but then, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not real people, are they? In the films, you know, the hero, somehow he's able to fight on his back. But it's very, very difficult to fight lying down. We need to stand, take on our fighting stance. And I just want to say it's no coincidence that one of the scriptures that we, 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 we know off by heart, Ephesians chapter 6, it says in verse 11, Put on the whole armour of God, why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We can't sit down with the devil or lie down. We've got to stand. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armour of God. Why? That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That is telling me that our position, our position is to stand. So to recap, Jehoshaphat received terrifying news. Many of us have received news that we really didn't want to hear. I don't know, if we look at the literal news that we've been watching lately, it makes you feel nauseous because it's all statistics and not nice statistics, negative statistics. So we felt the fear, we felt the stress, we felt the trauma. But we should immediately look to God because we have our God to stand on. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to a rock which cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Having done all, brethren stand. God bless you this morning in the name of Jesus. I now hand back to Sister Noble.